Okay, good evening. This is uh, the June 28th, 2017 ZBA meeting, and the first item on the agenda is uh, application for a variance for 168 Middle Road. Karen, could you please read the public hearing notice? Public hearing notice, Mr. Jason Kurtz, 168 Middle Road, Southboro. The Board of Appeals of the Town of Southboro will hold a public hearing in the Thomas J. McAuliffe hearing room of the Southboro Townhouse. 17 Common Street on Wednesday, June 28, 2017 at 7 p.m. with regard to the petition of Mr. Jason Kurtz, 168 Middle Road, Southborough, Mass. The petitioner is seeking a variance to construct an attached two-car garage. Relief is requested for a 14-foot, 9-inch encroachment pursuant to section to 174-8.2DC, side setbacks 25 feet. A copy of the application may be reviewed at the Office of the Building Department located at 9 Cordoville Road, Southboro, during normal business hours. Andrew J. Andrew R. Dennington. And are, are you uh, Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Why don't you come on up and uh, introduce yourself and feel free to make a presentation. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jason Kurtz. I live at 168 Middle Road. Um, and I just prepared a little things to go over for it. Um, I am not only the owner of the property, but I'm also the architect and the designer for this. So at the end of this uh, little presentation, and feel free to ask whatever questions that you might have about the project. Uh, as stated in the documents provided to you, uh, my, wife and my wife Deborah and I would like to add a two-car garage to our existing home. As expressed in your package in both graphic and written form, the existing property meets all uh, zoning requirements for the zoning district uh, residence A use. In terms of the existing FAR requirements, minimum lot area for a property with wetlands present and the property setbacks of the existing primary residence. The proposed design also meets all these requirements with the exception of the side setback of 25 feet, which is why I'm here today. The side which I'm referring to is the north side uh, of the residence. The existing residence to the required side setback line is 9.8 feet as shown on the plot plan. This width does not allow enough room to allow for an attached garage. The placement of the existing residence does make it possible to create a detached accessory building which only requires a 10-foot side yard setback. However, due to the presence of wetlands on the property and placement of the leaching field, it is seen as highly undesirable by the Conservation Committee as outlined in their letter in the presentation package provided for us to place the new detached garage toward the rear of the property in order to meet the uh, zoning requirements of placing it 10 feet from the primary residence. Due to the wetlands and the siting restrictions, we feel we have successfully met the criteria of expressing a hardship that would allow for a variance approval as outlined, hardship through the circumstance relating to soil conditions and topography. I have spoken with several of our neighbors about the project and as of yesterday, I have been informed that the direct abutters on both the north side, which is 166 Middle Road, the south side, which is 177 Middle Road, and the west side directly across the street, which is 197 Middle Road, have all submitted formal letters expressing their support for the project as designed as an attached garage. Uh, so to summarize, what we're asking is to utilize the setback requirements allowed for a detached accessory building of 10 feet while placing the structure closer to the road and further from the wetlands, which would in turn attach the structure. Okay, and um, Karen, could you just read into the record the, the letter of support that came in and, uh, and the names of the people that sure. put it in? It's dated June 20th, 2017. Dear Zoning Board of Appeals, I was informed by the owner of 168 Middle Road, Jason Kurtz. They are intending to create a garage addition to the side of their home directly in line with their current driveway. This garage would meet front yard setback requirements. However, due to the arrangement of the existing home on the property, it would violate the current side yard setback. The variance request is for relief of 14 feet 9 inches to allow the garage to function properly. I would like to offer my support of the variance as requested to allow the garage to be built as designed. And it's signed by Stacy and Jarrett Ledbetter 
of 197 Middle Road, Aaron and Jeffrey Jesus of 170 Middle Road, and Meredith Welsh of 166 Middle Road. Okay. Uh, I'd like you to open it up for uh, questions from the board. Debbie? Hi. Hi there. Um, I just have a couple of questions. Um, how long have you been? Uh, how, how long have we resided yep. there? Uh, yep. Since September of 2011. Okay. Do you have any problems with water or runoff from the neighbors? It looks like you are you have a walkout basement and your neighbors across the street are at a higher elevation. Yeah. I mean, as far as the, um, we don't have any water infiltration issues for inside our residence. Um, we have a sump pump like many of the homes in the area. It goes off once a year for about three, four days at the frost. Uh, mm -hmm you know, at the thaw at the end of the winter. Um, we do have water that comes into our driveway from the road because of a recent uh, construction, recent repavement of Middle Road raised it up just high enough that it now all cascades over the apron and into our driveway. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the proposed garage, at what elevation is it compared to the house or the, the, or the current? Um, you have a brick path kind of pavement area, right? Right, sure. So is it the same elevation? It's going it to be raised. The, the pavement's going to be raised up at the garage level. So the garage level is going to be 12 inches higher than what the current driveway is so that we can slope the driveway towards the street more properly mm -hmm. uh, to grade it so that mm -hmm. our driveway and water doesn't flow over down, our, down the street into our property and down to the wetlands uh, it was something that we covered in conservation more properly, and I'm going to be working with a civil engineer, but more properly treating the, um, the paving so that it, we're no longer taking on all the water from down the street and it can just continue on down to uh, Mount Vickery instead. Okay. Um, and was there a hearing for conservation or the letter that we received? The, uh, there is that was. the only thing or were there also? No, we, I went in front of uh, conservation and after that hearing, um, they offered their support with, through the letter and stuff. Okay. I just wondering, was there anything additional from that meeting that you think that we should? Uh, I mean, oh, the, I the few it. stipulations that they placed in, we included on the plot plan, which were kind of uh, you know, making sure that they use straw wattles and not hay bales and things like that to um, maintain any disturbance to the soil to protect the wetlands during construction. Mm -hmm. And then obviously trying to adjust some of the, uh, the existing topography of the driveway so that the water did not keep doing what it is right now, which is flowing towards the wetlands instead of down the road and around to the drainage. Okay, thank you. Before we move on, Lee just uh, gave me copies of um, a letter and a memo from the Conservation Commission. And I, there's, I'm not sure I had it in my first packet, but does everyone have these, uh, the letter and the memo from the Conservation <coughs> Commission? Right here. Oh, oh, it's with that? Okay. All right. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. There's no, <laughs> there's there's no technical there. issues yeah. with them, so I don't know why they have to be read. Um, I don't know if there's any me members of the public here that are are abutters that are interested in this application. So April, we'll April read them okay, a letter from the Conservation no Commission, so. April 25th, um, referencing negative determination of, of accountability. Oh my God. Dear Mr. Kurtz, in close, please find a determination of ac applicability. Applic applicability. <laughs> applicability. Excuse me. Permit for the proposed garage addition at 168 Middle Road, Southboro. The commission agreed to issue a negative determination of applicability with the following mm -hmm. findings of fact. One, the wetland boundary is not being confirmed through the issuance of this permit. Two, due to the increase in pervious area proposed, additional infiltration shall be installed. Options include stone infiltration strip along driveway, cistern or, or rain barrel to capture roof runoff, pervious pavers or similar installed in driveway, or cobblestone driveway edge. Three, the preferred option for both the homeowner and the conservation commission is the construction of an attached garage, which would be sited 35 feet further away from the wetland boundary than the detached option. 
the, the attach option requires a variance from the, I think it should be ZBA. The variance is not granted and the attached garage is required. The application will be required to file a notice of intent application to proceed with the work. A pre-construction meeting to inspect the erosion controls is required. At this time, you can also inform the commission which infiltration option you have chosen. Please contact the conservation office, 508-485-0710, to schedule the inspection. If you have any further questions, please inform us when you file the variance request so that we can submit a letter indicating our preferred option and why. Sincerely, Beth Rosenblum, conservation agent. And the other letter is dated June 13th, 2017 to the Southboro Zoning Board of Appeals from Beth Rosenblum, conservation agent. The Southboro Conservation Commission held a public hearing on April 20th, 2017 for a request of determination of applicability <laughs> filing by Jason Kurtz, 168 Middle Road. The application was filed to determine whether the proposed construction of an attached garage and drainage improvement are subject to the Wetlands Protection Act or Southboro Wetland Bylaw. At the hearing, Mr. Kurtz described his proposal to construct an attached garage and explain the zoning setback requirements for an attached structure versus a detached one. Mr. Kurtz said a detached structure is considered an accessory building and has a 10-foot side yard setback. An attached structure has a 25-foot side, uh, side yard setback. Mr. Kurtz said he would be filing a request for the variance from the ZBA to allow a reduced side yard setback for the proposed attached garage which would place the structure 90 feet away from the wetlands at the rear of the property. If a detached garage were constructed, the structure would be required to be sited 35 feet away from the wetlands to meet the setback requirements. The commission discussed both garage options and which option was preferable from the conservation and environmental perspective. The commission was unanimous that it that an attached garage is the better and preferred option rather than the detached one due to the amount of additional land disturbance required to access the rear yard and the close proximity to the wetlands for the detached option and refer and offered to write a letter to the ZBA in support of an attached garage lo location and the variance requests. The commission voted to issue the negative determination of applicability <laughs> for the attached <coughs> garage construction option, stating that this option should cause no em impacts to wetlands and that erosion and sedi sedimentation control devices along the stormwater drainage improvements would be installed per the permit approval. The commission also agreed that if the ZBA does not grant the requested variance and a detached garage becomes the only option, then the negative determination of applicability <laughs> permit issued is invalidated and Mr. Kurtz would be required to file a more extensive notice, extensive notice of intention application, which would also require re-notifying abutters and an appearance at a public hearing. Given these facts, the Conservation Commission respects, respectfully supports the variance request for a reduced side yard setback to allow construction of an attached garage at 168 Middle Road. Okay. Thank you. Paul? Um, I, I really don't have any questions. I think it's pretty well explained here. Um, you know, the fact that the, the direct abutters are in favor and conservation gave it somewhat of a thumbs up. I, I, I think it's a, a pretty sound idea. The, the renderings are also, you know, I think, pretty appropriate based on the house and the scale of the house and the such. So it's not, I don't think this is a, like some stuff we've seen where it's just, you know, disproportional or out of scale or, you know, we've sent a couple things back to maybe look at different ways of doing it. I think it was that's what you do for a living <laughs> but it, I think it was well I think it was well done and put together so I don't have any further questions okay yeah Lee? I agree also and I only have one question on one of the drawings here mm -hmm. it shows the garage even with the house which the drawing is that ten foot back you gotta use your microphone oh, I'm sorry <laughs> um, one of them shows it ten foot back and then the other one shows it flush but the front, I'm just curious which one is proper. Is which drawing are you? Um, is it going to be the 10 foot one back? No, that's the, that's if we don't grant the variance, he's gonna go with that because that's what he can do as a, as a supplemental structure with the 10 foot setback that the Conservation Commission doesn't want. 
Can I so see the that? one? No, so my question is, which one is he doing? Wh which drawing are you referring What's to? I'm one? sorry. The, if you over here, there's uh, there's names like yeah. in the corner. Um, so is it the I, I think it's EL elevation five or plan six? I assume he, I think he means the site. The site. The are site are you talking about the site plans? Yeah, I'm just curious which which one is the elevation one? four oh, versus sorry. plan six. You want to come up and show us? Elevation four versus plan six. Yeah. Is it? Is it, is it four? Or is it not six? Plan six. Oh. Um, plan six is the version that aligns with the detached that is allowed, but is not the preferred from conservation. Okay. But that's not what you prefer doing then. Correct. Okay. Right. The elevation four. Yeah, I have no problem with it. I think between the abutters being a, a, in favor of it and no issues with conservation, I think is actually preferred by, preferred by conservation as opposed to just no issues. Right. So I agree. So were you saying on one of these plans it shows where the alternate alternate design would be? Correct. Yeah. Plan six the and last the last pages. site plan. Well, we're shown the for office. conservation, so I kept it in the package so it could be seen. That was what would be allowed. That's what's legal. If, it wasn't if conservation. And the next page, which is right. the site plan. That's, that's by right. Okay, we got it. All right. Um, I mean, I, I understand this, and you know, there's all the neighbors are in support. I, I still kind of struggle with the hardship here. You know, what is the hardship that, that supports this variance relief? But you know, I'll go with what the, what the board is I, thinking here. I think the uh, the idea is that for the in support of the Conservation Commission what's better for the environment the variance is a better thing for the town and the environment he can build a two-car garage either way okay I agree with that that's right. that's the hardship yeah. here I believe is <laughs> not, you know, any actual not, hardship some not damaging some, the environment yeah. so right. <laughs> question is mr. chairman do we have anybody in the public to make a comment that's a good point. Um, is there anyone here who wants to speak about this uh, variance application? No? <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Um, any other discussion? I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? All those opposed? What? To uh, close the public? public hearing? No, I'm not. Yeah. No, I'd make a motion to approve as presented in front of us. Okay, is there a second? I don't see any conditions to go with it, so. I'll, I'll second that. All those in favor? All right. All those against? Oh, okay. So you got it, four one. You only needed four. Okay. Thank you. We have a few minutes, so do we take and do approval of the minutes? Let's do some minutes. We have uh, May 17th and June 7th. You did a good job. Sorry to make you do that. I know that's kind of ultra formal. I did too. Well, this is anyway. Here we go. Okay, let me. Uh, so on the May 15th. thing I noticed in reading through the May 17th? Yeah. Correct anything. Any of my grammar, too. Give me a quick Let me get. Yeah, Andrew gave me a finger. Andrew, I put them in this. <laughs> I put them right in the packet for tonight. It sets the minutes. The one I left. I might look on with someone else. Yeah. No, okay. yeah, maybe. What do you want? Well, okay. I can't. You can look at it, but you're going to get to give it back to me for the changes. Okay, May 17th minutes. So the only thing I noticed was on page five of seven. 
towards the bottom, Mr. John Green. Just kind of at the end, it, there wasn't a public review and discussion of the chapter 48 portion of the, just kind of ends. Site plan, I think oh, that's yeah. what I meant. Pop it in, pop it in for me because that's my only copy. Yeah. Okay, I, I, now that I look at it, I think I, I have um, yeah, I think already I seen this. Anyway. I've already seen this, okay. I, I, sent off my email, so. I think everything else is pretty much accurate. Karen, there's just a typo on page two. It should be Miss Michelle Walker. Oh, Miss instead of Mr. Is, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Anybody notice anything else? Check the attendance grid too, just make sure you get that right. For your own self anyway. Yeah, that's right, because I didn't sit on Hillside. Hillside. Yeah, does it work for I think it's very impressive um, you're able to fit that small font into that table. Actually, so the table up on yeah, I can fit a little bit. Yep. Um, on, actually, for on the chart, the grid for present and stuff. Yep. The P's on five and actually, I don't think he was here at all. Who's that? Mr. Walker. He was. He was. He here. was here. He's, was he he's, here? He did. Yeah, because he's on the film, and uh, and I. Okay. Yeah, he came and sat and listened to it. I don't him. remember yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was, I was talking. I was that was one in a long time. time. Oh, but I think you're saying he was not here for the Five Hillside Avenue part. Uh, I, you know what? I didn't think he, he was, was here at all. I could. He was. I, apparently, okay. I'm totally Did wrong. He, the whole thing? <laughs> he, was, he, he was here for Hillside because. Okay. He was here for one of them. For he was here for Hillside. Yes, I do remember yes. that now. Yes. <laughs> Two people in so, the room. Yes. <laughs> Any other changes on the May 17 minutes? We have a Someone want to make a motion to approve as amended? I have a question what this is for. We already just discussed that. Yeah, but that was just, the, the rest of the meeting wasn't for that, nothing to do with it, right? This is a comment he made during the meeting. He, he questioned uh, when the 40A portion of the site plan was reviewed. Right, but what is, what is the rest of the discussion on the, that meeting? Has that anything to do with the 48? I think he just made No, no, he, he was making a, statement, a, a statement, and the, it, right? the the portion that was wrong is that it just says the. Yeah, it, I'm it just wondering the whether I was sitting on it or not. That's you were doing. not. You were not. I have a mouse in, right? I have or anything to do with the Park I Central. Think. I think he's asking for the. Correct, yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. Because that was a Park Central piece, so you were That's what I'm absent. wondering. Oh, I see what she did. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. And it was no just problem. a statement. There was no response. Yeah. Someone want to make a motion to approve as amended? I, I move to approve the May 17th, 2017 minutes as amended. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. All those against? And Leo is abstaining. I'm step down. Okay. And then uh, the June 7th minutes, these were just about uh, the last part of the Five Hillside Avenue. Yeah. I make a motion to approve the June 7th minutes. I, I want to just take a quick. Okay, then we need to. I need to change that. Um, you came. You were just here early because. How do you get the five hillside? On that, on that went on the Wednesday seventeenth. I was here for the present year, but then on the June seventh, I was absent altogether. Oh yeah, you missed that meeting. You gotta um, use your microphone. Oh, your mic on. On, on, on the May seventeenth one, I was, for whatever it's worth, it's not a. You know, big to do, but I was present in the audience. Okay, all right. So, for which matters were you in the audience on uh, May 17th? I was present for the hillside and then sat on the 
Park right. Central. On the Park Central. I'm going to make it a P instead of an A. Right. All right, that's good. And then on the seventh. And then on the on the seventh, I was I was not present, so I was absent. That's correct. So then, thusly, I should just abstain from. Mm -hmm. I'm abstaining. Okay, I don't see any issues with it. The June 7th minutes. I abstain. Okay. You're abstaining as well, Paul? Hmm? You're not okay, abstaining as well. All the other components of like the vegetative screen and stuff like that were just part of the site plan? They were part of the decision that we made and has already been filed with the town clerk. Okay. But do you think Because the motion just states about the applicant installing the curb at his own expense and then and then abide by the conditions on the site plan. It doesn't mention the yeah. vegetative screen as I part guess of the yeah. conditions okay. of the decision. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna add that he's required to install vegetative screening. Per town code. I think everything else was part of the plan in terms of grading and okay. permission from the abutter to do the grading. Yeah, that was that on the plan. We have that above. I don't know if that was part of, that's not part of the motion though. We motion, we mentioned it above. It's in the decision though that he has to, yeah. that's one of the numbered right. conditions that he gets that permission. But it's not part of the part where we so, talk about the So motion. why don't you say this? Okay. The part where it says, the applicant must also abide uh, by the conditions listed on the site plan dated, well, so it should be November 3rd, 2016, oh, right? Oh, sorry, yeah. Latest revision dated. That's good. And then after May 25, 2017, comment, including the requirement to obtain a butter approval before grading. Approval. Written approval. And um, in the vegetative screening, I'll list up above. I'll write. Uh, yeah. Install curbing. The applicant required to at his own expense and seek reimbursement for the town as well. At, but the, he doesn't seek it. Uh, doesn't get a seek reimbursement for the vegetative screening. Separate line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And I'll send them to you before I. Publish them. Okay. You know, we'll do it as amended and then I'll send it to you just to make sure I got the verbiage right and then we can I'll post them. Okay. I'm good. Yep. Move to approve the minutes of June 7th, 2017 as amended. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Did you abstain? abstain? Okay. I've got 729, so we'll just wait one more minute. You guys can come on up here. Come on up here. Thank you so much. Um, we don't have one scheduled.
Okay, I've got 7.30. Yep, so yeah, I agree. The next item on the agenda is a application for a special permit um, for 39 Sears Road. Karen, could you please read the public hearing notice? Notice of public hearing, Mr. Jose Martins, Mr. David Ferris, 39 Sears Road, Southboro, Mass. The Board of Appeals of the Town of Southboro will hold a public hearing in the Thomas J. McAuliffe hearing room of the Southboro Townhouse, 17 Common Street, on Wednesday, June 28, 2017, at 7.30 p.m. with regard to the petition of Mr. Jose Martins, 39 Sears Road, Southboro. The petitioner is seeking a special permit to construct an attached eight-car garage, which exceeds the allowed number of garages by five, and an attached two-car garage. Relief is requested pursuant to Section 174.8.2b12. A copy of the application may be reviewed at the Office of the Building Department, located at 9 Cordoville Road, Southboro, Mass., during normal business hours. Andrew R. Dennington. Okay, sir, if you want to introduce yourself, uh, speak into the microphone and make a presentation. My name is Jose Martins. I live at 87 Main Street in Southboro. And I'm here with Peter Bemis, who also lives in town. And I need to cl clarify something that's incorrect on that public notice. We are seeking relief for a total of eight parking spaces, not ten. The okay. The original no uh, application was for ten, but we reduced it to eight. The letter written by Mark Robido indicated eight. But somehow the notice went out as ten. So we are looking for eight, not ten. Okay. Um, I am here representing Anna and David Ferris, who own the property at 39 Sears Road. I'm simply I'm a consultant for them. I'm helping them with the process, selecting an engineer, an architect. Uh, they have yet to determine who the builder will be. Um, we are here to seek zoning relief from the Southboro bylaw under Chapter 174-8.2b. We are requesting a special permit which will allow us to construct a single family home at 39 Sears Road with an attached two car garage and a second attached six car garage for a total of eight spaces which exceeds the maximum allowable by five. Uh, David Ferris, the owner of the property who grew up in South Grove, currently lives on Hillside Ave with his wife and four children. They bought this property about two years ago with the intent of moving into it. After a, a careful analysis of the existing property, they determined that the structure would not accommodate their needs, so they decided to tear the house down, which was built in 1984, and build a new custom home, the home you see here. The house, um, the main house has five bedrooms, multiple baths, living room, dining room, the standard rooms. The right-hand side, there is a pool, a, a room with an indoor pool, and then the left-hand side, is the uh, six car garage with a room above. Um, the, uh, the new home, uh, the purpose for the, the need for the uh, additional parking is pretty simple. David Ferris is a collector of exotic automobiles uh, and uh, he needs some place where he can store them. In addition, his four children will eventually need their own automobiles, so the need for the added space. Um, the front elevation is what you'll see on Sears Road. Uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Peter. He can describe the site conditions, but just please note that all of the parking, all of the, the garage doors face either to the rear of the property or to the left-hand side. Nothing will be seen from Sears Road. Okay, Peter. Good evening, Peter Bemis, Engineering Design Consultants. And I think that's supposed the most important feature of this proposal. Um, this is, is going to appear to be a carriage house. It will, you'll just see windows across the front, and to orient you, you're basically looking at that facade here. Now. So in orange, we're showing where the six-car garage is going to go, and then in orange here, we're showing where the two-car garage is going to go. And looking back at that from the other perspective, you would go down to this lower portion on the elevation, and you're basically seeing that extension of the wing looking this way. Can I just so ask you a question? Sure. So the plan you're pointing to, is that uh, dated uh, May 22, 2017? That's correct. That's okay. a site plan that, that was uh, accompanied our application. 
And so I'm just going to, I'll just go over the full orientation with that then. So, so to the left is Sears Road. Um, to the right is actually the um, Fay School property. Okay. Um, to the north, uh, we've got land of McCarthy. To the south, we've got land of Molinari. Those are our uh, immediate abutters. Uh, the driveway is a common driveway coming in off of Sears Road. And uh, for those of you that might have gone through the site, there's a, a marker here identifying 39 Sears Road. So as you come in, you'd go to the right to go to the Molinari property. Uh, for this property, you, you go to the left. Um, under existing conditions. So I'm just going to take you up the existing driveway. If those of you who may have gone up there, you'd go right through our proposed garage. Okay? We're proposing a new driveway that's going to come in off of where the apex of where the two driveways come together here and would rotate to the right. And that's basically where there's an existing clearing going up through the property. And that would bring you to the front door. You'd go under the uh, portiche here. So right here, you're going to have this arched opening. You'd go through and then you'd be into the back portion of the site, so you won't even see where these garages are. You'd enter from those six available garage doors here. There are four and two on the side, and then there would be two garage doors here. And that's why I was al alluding to this elevation here for the two. And then if you um, look back here, you'd be at the back, coming back to the four garage doors. They're then coming back towards the, um, this would be to the west. Okay. Um, again, going back to the property overall, seven and a half, almost seven and a half acres. Uh, we've got an existing dwelling here. So again, if you came up that existing driveway, you'd come to those garage doors that are actually facing the street today. Um, that's where that existing dwelling is. That will be raised to support the new structure here. There's actually a pool up in here that's also going to be raised. And then we've got an existing structure back here that's going to be reused uh, for later purposes. So um, that's it as an overall. I mean, we do have a few other improvements. We're going to be putting in a new soil absorption system for this, this new residence. As, as Jose mentioned, this wing on the end here is a swimming pool. They'll have an indoor swimming pool as part of the uh, proposal. We've got good setbacks to all of our butters. Um, we really have no activity that's occurring back towards the school property. Uh, as you know, you recently approved the uh, solar panels on the upper portion. They're about 600 feet from our rear lot line. So I can actually give you some perspective on that. That's the, uh, that would be that solar array here. And we're, we're down here. And the grade goes up quite a bit. Uh, Molinari properties here. You can see there's a very large uh, wooded buffer between us here. Uh, the McCarthy property here. Again, a very large wooded buffer here. And uh, again, the remaining portion of, uh, of St. Mark's. So again, you can see we've got from, from, from Sears Road um, I do have some pictures, but if you would drive down there today, you won't see this property. You don't see anything from the street because we've got quite a bit of a wood line here. You just see the opening through the driveway. When the leaves are down, you can get some views back up to the property, but they're, n they're very limited. Um, so again, for the most important thing would be seeing these garages. You're not going to see them from the street. Uh, what you will see, uh, would, what you would see if you do see anything would be that front facade of the uh, building looking like a carriage house portion of the dwelling. I just further questions you may have. Questions? <coughs> uh, sure. So you were, um, I guess you were pointing out that, that I guess at one point it was construed to be an eight car and a two car garage? That's correct. And now it's a six. How fundamentally does it does it change from being uh, the six component? Because I mean, I'm looking at that. You have four garage doors for mm -hmm. four cars, mm -hmm. and you have a then you have a I guess a double door that would for where you're delineating two other cars, right. where there's clearly room for two other cars to be you know parked in there and then some so well there's a work there's a work area there's a sharp area not a sharp area but a, a a tool area in the middle we actually downsized the size of the garage the original was was a little bit larger and uh, we just felt this this size felt better on the fit better on the lot so we did downsize the size of the garage but i mean is there and i don't even know i don't have the answer to this question lee you might even know is there a is there any is there any difference between a 
you know, the, an eight car garage and a six car garage? Is, is there a, another threshold that we're, you know, I, from I a- I don't know that answer. I, I, you know, we, uh, the, the building inspector based on the number of garage doors. So he's basing it on the amount of garage doors. Yeah. And that's six. Yeah. Which is six, but I mean, as is, you know, you, yeah, you, know. You, you see what I'm saying is, is that- There's six you know, in this structure and two in this structure. Well, I understand, I I'm not, I understand the two part. Okay. Um, mm. on Two's the, easy. On the six part, I mean that that, I mean you're you're calling it a a work barn. I mean it's yeah. this is a I mean so that's clearly, you know that clearly would be a space for another two cars and then, you know probably if you wanted to put more in there in tandem that can certainly. I'm sure you could do that in almost any garage, I suppose, right? I can do that in my garage. I, I have a two car garage. Right. But, but I'm um, just I was just curious. Is there was there another threshold that we were you know, that was trying to be avoided. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer for that. I, I, I would say we're not, we're not trying to avoid a threshold. The, the threshold is that if you go over three cars, yeah. we have to come to you to get right. a special permit, and that the application in, original, in its original um, genesis was the fact that this was a larger structure, so they anticipated having more uh, vehicles in that structure. They brought the structure down in size, so they're just looking for six, with two in the attached structure, with a total of eight, that's the application. That's what we're looking for your approval on. And then, is there an intention for there to be lifts in there also? No. So I don't even know, like I don't even know what the height clearance for that would be. Or uh, you need about 12 feet, but um, there, I don't think he intends to have lifts in there. You do have room, it looks like, for lifts. Looks like a 13 foot. Probably, ceiling. yeah. But I think I don't think his collection. I don't think would require it. He, he's got. I think he's got about four or five cars. And but I that's also that's. I don't know the internal. You know, that's the uh, exterior clearance. Uh, no, I'm just looking at the. It, it'd be close, but. Um, okay, so he has four to five cars. Last time I, I, I recall, he had about four or five cars, and plus his wife kids? has a car. Yeah, these kids aren't of driving age yet. They, they're many? getting there, but eventually. How many kids you said? He's got four. Two, four, that's six, and five. It's 11 cars. Yeah. So they'll I'm have to do what my kids do and park outside. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah, I guess the, uh, I don't know if I really have any other questions. I mean, what? I understand it. Um, I think, I think the intent of the, the garage on the left is, is to showcase his collection. You know, he's, he's got a collection of cars, he's got signs, he's got all kinds of bric-a-brac if you know what I mean that comes with car collecting he wants to he wants to call it like his museum the, the garage on the right will be the family garage for his wife and his kids if they ever you know if they're around so I, I think he suggested we call it a museum I said no let's just call it a garage totally yeah. Different <laughs> yeah I was about to say let's stick with <laughs> let's stick with garage <laughs> <laughs> Lee um, I have no problem with it because of the major issue that if where there are eight acres of, of property that you could build a barn on it and get mm -hmm. a building permit from the building inspector to build a barn and not have to come in front of the zoning board at all and put all the cars in it you want. So oh, I see okay. there's no reason or anything wrong in doing this at all. That's, that's a, actually a very good point. <laughs> what? That's a very good point, yeah. Though so I see no reason in not approving this that it should be approved. Are there um, any, actually, are there any special codes because it's being a garage that has to be sprinkled or anything like that? No, no not, so. not, not for what they're doing, not okay. for this use. No. You know, the major issue also is you can't see it from the road. Yeah. 
Yeah. You can drive by even now. You can't Turn by, see you it. can't well, see anything. I, I did have one question about that. Um, just so I understand it, I was looking on the plan and the elevation. So the home, um, if I understood the elevation right, the home is like 20 feet higher than the elevation where Sears Road is. But is it just that the lot is so big that that's already the, it's several hundred feet from the, the street and you get the yeah. wetlands. Yeah, yeah the wetland crossing okay. here would be its lowest point. Yeah. And, and then the, dra the grade does go up on the order of 20 feet. But, um, I mean, but that, again, uh, over eight acres, I mean, it goes up. It goes up probably another 20 feet to get to the uh, St. Mark's area where you you saw the uh, solar panels that you, you folks walked to. So I'm just saying that land just continues to go up. So I, I drove by it and um, you know stopped in front of that common driveway. Didn't drive in. It's not my property. And I just kind of peered out and I just could not see anything. You cannot That's, see anything. No. That's right. So, but the, the trees there. Those are, are those going to stay there? In the to, to some extent, I mean, we're, we are going to have, have some clearing that we are doing through that zone. So I'm not going to say that there, there aren't. Yep. I mean, they're going to be some cleared out. I mean, they, they want to see their home. Uh, they want it to have more presence on the street. So I'm, I'm not going to stand here and say they're not. But the most important takeaway from this is, are you going to see these garage doors? You're not going to see any of them at all. Yep. All you're going to see is that arched opening. And if you did travel Sears Road, you'd see a house that has a similar pattern to this say, one. There's, yeah, there's an is, existing is across the street, on, on very the, the similar. The farm property, that it's, it's on the, um, the west side. Yep. So as you were going north, you, you would see that home, very yeah. similar. Very Those similar garage doors archway. are facing yeah. the street. In this instance, none of them do. And that was kind of one of the design features we brought to the equation was we suggested, let's create that carriage house look. And then there's some balance and symmetry with this, with their swimming pool component on the other end. So it actually has a, quite, a lot of harmony on the, on the no, I mean architectural it's, side. It's well designed. It's a, it's so we really, you know, we really put a lot of thought into how we would create this and have no impact. Is is there, uh, sir, in the red shirt? Are, are you here uh, as an abutter, or do you want to you want to speak about this, or do you have anything to say? No, no, I'm just curious to see. Well, you got to you got to use. The store, so. <laughs> which which abutter are you? Excuse me? Which uh, the Molinari? Forty-seven Sears. Molinari. Mr. Molinari. No. No further. So you're going up. So so Macar So you must be one yeah, more. Forty-seven up. is going up yeah. uh, towards uh, it's, back it's, towards, it's, um, it's towards Marlboro it's Road, the Framingham Road. <laughs> okay. Mr. Chairman, I would yep. consider making a motion to close the public hearing. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Thank Chairman, you. I will make a motion that we approve the article in front of us. Is there a second? I'll second that. All those in favor? Nice. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. much. Yeah. Good night. Mr. Motion, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we close the meeting. Well, we got two other things to do. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. So I'm close. eager to get out of here. <laughs> Chairman, I make a motion that we nominate you as chairman again. <laughs> Is there any discussion? <laughs> um, no, but I thought we wanted to do it when we had the full regular board with Dave Williams not being here. Is that if it's not an issue, I don't really care. I just I don't think it's last an issue. We were holding back because yeah, of it. Yeah, but the date is done. We're not going to yeah. meet. I'll so I'll second Lee's I'm, motion. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember what our context was last okay. time that we didn't do it. So yep. I'm good either way. I don't have an issue with the nomination. I just wanted to. I second Lee's motion context. to nominate you as or renominate you as chairman. Lee. Lee. Seconded by Paul. All those in favor? Aye. Do I get a vote? I don't, I'm not sure I get to vote. You're I sitting. Uh, you can vote. You yeah, can you're vote. Sitting. Yeah, you're sitting today. You're sitting. Okay. Chairman. I've had it. Yeah, they cannot <laughs> vote on a chairman. It's illegal. Oh. Well, so be it. What? We'll just put it down That's as whatever it was and we'll deal with it later. The four of you still yeah. pass, four. right? Okay. No, the There's four a of us. majority, I think, no matter I'd how I'd also like to make a motion that Give me a minute. Craig. Craig gets <laughs> the position that he had last year, too, which I don't remember. The clerk. 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 As of last year. You're a fine clerk. I <laughs> toiled. <laughs> <laughs> I will second uh, Craig's nomination as clerk. Does Debbie get to vote on clerk? Yes. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Sure. Okay. And th there's one last thing I wanted to report back on at our last meeting. Um, I'll let you know that kind of the planning, Don Morris and uh, Aldo had, had organized kind of a meeting at, at um, 
townhouse where a couple members of the board of, uh, a couple members of the planning board, a couple members of the ZBA would just kind of talk about issues where we're kind of running into each other a little bit. And we had a good productive discussion. I think one thing that'll come out of it is Aldo may organize a session in the next couple of months. Nothing's really scheduled yet where both of the boards and maybe the conservation com commission can come to and just an hour to go through some of the most basic rules of e each of the boards. And uh, one thing that um, the planning board said that I would just report back on is that um, on the decision we made about the Mooney Field lights, if you remember, we, we granted the uh, variance and then we made a lot of conditions. There were actually conditions that were suggested by the Recreation Department. That was the proponent. It was all the result of negotiation. But bas basically, the Planning Board felt that, you know, under their bylaw, they had control over some of the hours of operation, and we kind of made a condition that set some hours of operation. So I think that all of our, the conditions we made to the variance were okay, but I did say I would report back and just say, you know, we'd keep that in mind the next time anything like that kind of came up. That, you know, sometimes if we get too detailed into the conditions, if it's going to go to the planning board for site plan review anyway, um, and, and I actually don't know whether that particular project goes I, to the planning actually, board. I thought it was plan you're completely wrong. I somewhat disagree with that also. You're completely wrong, sir. We have the authority to make our condition the way we want to do it as the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Planning Board has no say in what we do with that on the decision. It goes to them on a site plan approval. That's altogether different, but not on like that particular article that was in front of us. Well, I, I told them that we weren't making any promises about what we do, what we would not do. I just would report back their concerns. And you know, I think they've got some validity, and I'm going to keep them in mind next time well, something like that comes up. It's a pretty minor thing that we're talking about. It's completely I, illegal I, for the zoning board to do issues with the planning board on an article in front of the zoning board. It is illegal by law. And if you want to have asked Mr. Cipriano to clarify that regulation, because we've had that issue come up before in front of the zoning board. I, I think the main thing is it's probably not um, inappropriate legally for us to make those types of things. It might be in the best interest of the town to have the boards consistent and respectful of each other. I think the one thing that maybe the planning board isn't realizing is that if we didn't listen to the abutters about their concerns on conditions of approval, that we would have been absolutely vilified. And I, I did I make agree. that point. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think we all hear what Mr. Morris is trying to say about it, and I think we can all kind of take it in and, and be respectful of it. But, you know, we also have to understand that in order for us to have some level of confidence yep. within the town of our decisions, we need to be able to address those things as well. So I agree. Just one thing that, that to keep in mind is think about the, you know, the applicant's perspective. It could be a, a homeowner, developer. I mean, in this case, it was actually another town board, which was the applicant. If, if they say, I just want to get the approval and build what I want to build, if the ZBA says, no, we get to set the hours of operation, that the planning board says, no, we get to set the hours of operation, causes confusion, they don't care about fighting between the ZBA and the planning board. So just whatever is the best for the smoothest way for things to operate. The, thing, that, the thing that's wrong in it is that an issue like that goes to the planning board before it comes to us, and they write a letter to us with recommendations on it and normally we put those recommendations into our approval they did not do that on the light issue they have done it prior to that to us when i was chairman on different cases and on signs and different things and we've agreed to it and put it in our decision but they did not do it on that particular article for some reason okay which if they do do it that way prior to our meeting then we have the right to accept it or not Normally well, we, we, we can, accept it. and then they can be at our meeting if they want to chime in on or, 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 or give their opinion, which, and, you know, Mr. Morris often does. But, I mean, I, I agree with what Craig said is, is that if you're looking for a variance and, and, and there's things you're taking into consideration from what abutters and the public want, 
I, I think it's 100% appropriate for us to, to add those stipulations into the variance, and, and, and you're dead on. If we just said no approved, you know, then, then we would be vilified. I mean, I, I almost think the opposite is, is occurring more than not. We're saying, you know, we're, we're approving things, and then we're getting vilified because we approve things. You're right, and it's the regulation. So I, I mean, which, which you know, of the zoning which, board, which, which you know, which one is? Which I mean, you can't. Debbie, do you have any can't perspective have on this or? Um, no, I, I I agree. I think that you know so, sometimes these things are tricky, and sometimes these things are tricky, and um, I think it's the zoning board should um, put conditions on many of the <laughs> things that we approve. Is how I feel. I don't think it's always going to be black or white. I think there's yep. that's our tools, and I think we should be able to one, put conditions. And one thing I said at the meeting is, again, this is like an idea I have, and then actually doing it, that might take a couple months <laughs> later. But to go through the bylaw and just identify areas where the planning board and the ZBA kind of overlap in ways that are sometimes don't make a lot of sense. Like, remember, I mentioned the, the digital billboard thing, which came up, right? Um, Basically, we could not grant, that was a request for a use variance. There are no more use variances, but right. it was a request for a variance to our board. We could not grant the application until the planning board had, had issued a favorable report or something like that. Yeah, and, then we, we, well, and then we began our hearing before the planning board before there was a filing at the planning board, they were kind of going simultaneously. Why not just have, we could amend the bylaw to say, we're not even going to accept an application until you get a favorable report from the planning board because by law, we can't give you the relief that we're seeking until the planning board. The issue, the, see, the issue was on that, and I didn't sit on that because I wasn't about yeah, it, but the issue on that was that they came in front of you people under the issue of the use variance they weren't here for the application of the sign. It was for the use various issue, where if they had come for the application of the sign, they would have gone to the planning board first. That's uh, yeah, in, in that specific, I think it was a timing issue because the, the use thing was going away. However, I, 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 I understand what you're saying though, and yeah, it would make some sense if there is, you know, if there is Coordination. Coordination, yeah. then, then things could be better coordinated. I, I think, I mean, yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't want to, there be no reason not to. There better. is a rule and regulation in paper that it has to go to the planning board before it comes to us. Right, that's what, but those, that's. those items. We, but that was like a whole question we dealt with. And if the a bylaw was amended to make it more clear, we would never have to deal with something confusing like that. Right, right. so that's what I'm saying. So if things are, to, if things are made more clear, or like you said, you know, coordinated or better coordinated, I'm, I'm obviously in favor of, you know, better so coordination. I don't think we have anything else in the pipeline or on the no. agenda. So uh, it looks like we're not going to have to have a meeting in July. Um, yeah, because I don't think the timing would work anyway, even if, um, so let's see. Um, Should we just get together and hang out? There's not, enough time. There's not enough time to. You've got another week of drinks. This well, week, I and that's it. No one's going to be around this week. So if nobody files <laughs> by even Friday, it don't matter. Unofficially to you. Yeah. So we've had all this, I know, Paul, you're saying let's get back on the schedule. Now is our opportunity. Aha. <laughs> we had a so nice meeting actually, on the. So the question is, do we, that's stupid. We're not going to have a meeting just to approve minutes. Well, that's dumb. Well, we can just, we can, <laughs> you can no. put on your calendar that, you know, we're, we're probably going to have some meeting on the third Wednesday of, uh, August. August, and yeah. then you know, if there's nothing going on, then maybe we won't. The last, meet. I'll get the last two Wednesdays booked. So the 16th. Okay. Why do you say the third Wednesday of August? Because we're because always trying to do the third Wednesday as our yeah. first option. What? We're always trying to do the third Wednesday as our well, first option. Well, that gives an opportunity if they get something in the middle of July, the person's not waiting all the way till the end of August. If you do it the yeah. third of well, August. Yeah. If you do the third Wednesday, then that means it's got to be filed by the second week of July. Right. To be on there. So. Yep. All right. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, honestly, I've said that a couple times. Yeah, I'd love to get on a, on so a lot, regular. It's going to be out anyway, so no one's getting a letter. I mean, even if an application comes in, the building inspector's not going to have time to write them a letter. You know, there's no chance of getting in July. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It will be determined by somebody making an application, right. filing an application. Yeah, there's nothing in the pipeline. So, there's nothing there right now, okay. so you want to just, we'll put on our calendars or yeah. we've got a tentative meeting on August 16th at, at sure. 7 p.m., and then if there's nothing going on, then we won't meet. 
Okay. I th you don't have to do that. I think it's more just so that we don't book something else accidentally and then we're all What's scrambling. Going to? Well, so and I need it as a guideline. It's up to the chairman. Thing. It's up to her as, the, as our secretary that when somebody files four weeks to decide when and she gets the chairman no, and that's the way it should be. But to make an appointment for a meeting, we have nothing on our agenda to do it. That's ridiculous. You no, know, the idea is that we all schedule in our own calendar so that we don't book something else and have there be issues in scheduling something on time. So everybody just clear off the 16th of August, the third Wednesday of every month, as a potential ZBA meeting, and, and then we'll- them. The first thing I do is I email them to let them we'll know that verify. I have them If something comes up- Scheduling the meeting, we're just saying put it in your calendar. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> seven o'clock will be the, like our, yeah. our yeah. normal time? One other- uh, oh, those throw me off. Outstanding piece of business. We do now have a, a vacant alternate slot, so if people know people who are interested, I think you'd be good candidates. Uh, recommend that they apply to uh, be nominated by the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen sent a, put a thing out the other day, last week. Okay. By that application. They sent a request out publicly. I think that's it. I move to adjourn. I second it. All those in favor? Okay.